Hello and welcome to this video where we are going to talk about web crawling. More specifically, we are going to develop Python program to perform web crawling. Web crawling refers to a systematic way of navigating through a website, starting, starting from the seed URL, also known as the main URL, all the way to other sub uh, links that are found in that particular website, with the sole purpose of accessing the information that it that is contained in the website. Web crawling is the power behind many of the modern search engines that we have today because when you google some information that is contained in a page within a major website google is able to crawl through that particular website starting from the main url until it accesses the information that you desire and then displays it for you therefore we cannot underestimate the power of web crawling crawling is also referred to as uh, spider bots and uh, you'll find so many material calling it as spiders or bots but i want to demystify the myth here it is not illegal to do web crawling like you are going to do in this particular example and therefore you can feel free to practice in it for you to be able to do web crawling in python you need two very important libraries the first one is known as the request library which we use to make HTML requests to the specific URL that we want to crawl, and we use the get method to do that. Then you have the beautiful SOAP uh, library, and this beautiful SOAP library is mainly used to scrape data from the specific uh, website that we are crawling. We did a previous video on how to do web scraping and uh, access information that is in a table and save it in a CSV file, and we use beautiful SOAP to do that. If you have not watched that video, I'll have left it in the description link below. You can click on it and watch it so that you can as well learn how to scrape specific information. Now, having said that, you can be able to program this uh, program that you're going to do either in Colab, in Jupyter Notebook, or even in PyCharm. In my case, I'm going to use Google Colab. And uh, if you are, if you are, if it's the first time for you to develop a Python program, or if just in case your machine is not powerful enough to support uh, an Accorda distribution environment or even PyCharm, I would as well recommend that you do it in Google Colab because it is a cloud-based platform. So start by first writing the code to import the request library, import request, import BS4 from BS4, import beautiful soap, and then you can run that cell. You can press shift enter or you can just click here to run the cell. Remember, if you're using Google Colab, you must be connected to the internet so that uh, your Colab can be able to execute because it's a cloud-based platform. Now, the speed at which it executes depends on the strength of your internet. You go to the next cell and you start by defining the URL of the website that you want to crawl. In this case, I want to crawl this bbc.com website and you can see that it has quite a lot of information which means that it also have quite a number of links. So copy this URL and uh, you paste it here. So you have a variable known as seed URL and then you paste the specific URL. Let us now make a request using the request uh, library that we imported here. So we create a variable known as response and then we call the request library and the method known as get. And in this case, we are making a request to the seed URL, which is the URL that we have defined here, which is https www.bbc.com. So what this one is going to do is that it is going to try and access this particular website. So once you have done that, the next thing is now to pass the HTML response. And to pass our HTML response, we are going to use a beautiful soap. So we create a variable beautiful soap and we can call it soap. Then we call the library known as beautiful soap. And then uh, this uh, uh, request that we made here, we created a variable known as response. So we call that variable known as response and then dot content, which means that we want to access the content of this particular website. And then we call the HTML dot parser method, which means that we want to access the HTML content of the website. We are not interested in the styling of the website, neither are we interested with the scripting of the website. We are interested mainly with the content. And if you have done basic web development, you know that it is HTML that creates the content of the website. Then for our first task, we'll first access all the links that are found in this particular website so that we can see what exactly uh, make this uh, website. So we find all the links, and in this case, we create a variable known as uh, links, and then we call this SOAP method that we created here, or this SOAP identifier that we created here, which is an identifier of beautiful SOAP, and it is the one that is housing all the 
uh, response that you have gotten from our website. So this swap houses all the content that is found in this particular website. And then we say find all A, and then we define a variable known as A, which means that we basically want to find all. Then what do we want to find all? Not the content, not anything. We want to find the links. So how do you find the links in HTML? The links are found in something known as href. href is the one that is used to uh, do linking in HTML, the method that is used to do linking in HTML. So at any time that uh, this particular program is crawling this website, whenever it encounters href somewhere, it knows that it is that is a link and it is linking to something else, and thus it will be able to print it. As you can see, we have used a for loop because we expect that it is not just one link that is available in this website, and therefore we expect that our program is going to loop through uh, various iterations until it finds all the links that are available. And if you run this particular cell, it will take a few moments and then it will print for us all the links that are available. You can be able to see them. Uh, they are quite a number and uh, some of them are clickable, others are not clickable because some are a continuation of uh, like this one, you can see it over here. These are, the link is here all the way and then it continues to this particular section. And you can see that they are quite a number, it's a very heavy list all the way up to here so you can click on the specific ones just to see if you can be able uh, to access them and see uh, what is contained in it for instance if we click on this one you can see that you can be able to access the contact part of that particular website so why is this important it is critical because you may be desiring to know uh, what else is hidden inside that particular website in the various links that we have and you want to access it uh, more direct rather than going to the website itself and then trying to navigate through looking for the specific uh, section that contains those elements. Because when you when I look at this particular website and I navigate, uh, to get to where we have um, the contact session, the contact uh, section, I think you, yeah, this is where we have the contact section. You can see it's almost towards the very edge of this particular web page and therefore it will have taken you a lot of time to navigate through. And thus you can use uh, web crawling and print all the links to simplify your work. Now links are not enough. What about we do something more important and we try and uh, print the major topics that are represented in uh, this particular website. And in this case, we are going to do something known as uh, accessing all the HTML heading two elements. And when you talk about HTML heading two elements, they are the ones that are used to define the subtopics of the main topic. So we have the entire website and now the key topics are represented using the H2 in HTML. So we come here, you can define the seed URL again, which is www.bbc.com. Make a response again. And now after you, may, you have made a, a request, now uh, do what we call HTML passing and uh, you store that particular information at a variable known as SOAP, like we did in the previous cell. Now, this is where we get more specific. We first find all HTML two tags. So we define a variable known as H2 underscore tags. And then we say that this is equal to soap dot find all. Remember, find all means that crawl the entire website until you are able to get all of them. And in this case, we're interested in the H2 tags. Now, after we get the H2 tags, it's not just enough to get them. Extract the text that is found in this H2 tags. So we create another variable that is known as H2 underscore text is equal to h2.text h2 is what we have um, been able to get here for the h2 tags that we have in all the uh, tags that are going to be stored in this particular variable known as h2 underscore tags so this one what is going to do is that it will extract from those particular h2 tags extract the text that is contained in it then this text is going to be quite huge and uh, some of it will not be formatted and therefore we need to do some basic formatting to it. And the basic formatting that we need to do includes something like uh, uh, removing the empty strings from the list, as well as uh, uh, being able to uh, print the major topic that we are able to extract from these H2 tags. So we start by removing the empty strings and to do that, we come here and now we have a variable known as H2 underscore text. And then we use text for text method uh, to uh, remove all the empty strings. What this means is that anything that does not contain text, which is considered to be null in programming, will be removed, and only that uh, that 
contains some text in it that's why we are calling it text for text uh, will be retained for us to be able to print out after we have done that now we can come here and we print uh, the major topics that are being discussed in this particular um, website and to do that you first create uh, our outlier or our message which is major topics being discussed on the BBC website then we come here and, and uh, create a loop so for h2 underscore text remember now h2 underscore text here has already been updated is not accepting any null values in h2 underscore text which is this one that we had defined here print h2 underscore text now print these ones that are not uh, null values or the ones that contains information i want you to get this one very clearly that the first h2 underscore text is extracting all the information well as here in the second one uh we are we have now modified it after it has extracted all the information we have removed the null values or the empty strings and now we have the required text so we can uh, be able to run that cell and once we run it we can see this message that we printed here it has appeared here media topics discussed in the bbc links we have accessibility news sports 100 good students book editor speak latest business news and uh, they are quite a number you can see them and this can give you an idea of what the website is about and uh, from this we can easily tell that this website is more of a journalism website it's more of a news website because of the kind of information that it is giving us here you can try this with any other website that you desire especially if you want to know if a website can be able to give you the content that perhaps you are looking for you can first print uh, the major topic that it is discussing and then from that you can easily tell if the website is worth your attention or not and uh, i wish to stop at that point thank you so much for watching this video please consider subscribing to the channel like our videos um, put your comments in the comment section below as well share the videos with your friends so that they can also benefit from the content that we are creating thank you